When Jesus comes on the scene in the Gospels, he uses phrases like the kingdom of heaven is near or the kingdom of God is at hand. And by this, I don't mean some sort of magic kingdom pie in the sky, like heaven is where you go when you die thing. What Jesus is saying is the kingdom is now. That you can be sitting, occupying the very same space, but living in one of two kingdoms. In the kingdom of this world, pleonexia is our currency. We trade, we hustle in the currency of more, more whatever it is for you, more money, more food, more clothes, because more is about security. More is about stability. Whatever our more is, we are using to meet some deep desire or need inside of us. Olivia Mellon is a psychotherapist who specializes in money conflict resolution. So imagine like high dollar divorces or a state division. And here's what she says. There's this undercurrent that money equals love, power, security, control, self-worth, self-esteem, self-love, freedom, all those loaded things that money supposedly can do but doesn't. Look at that list. Love, power, security. Those are the deepest needs of our heart. No matter who you are or where you come from, these are the things in the pit of your being that you need to meet. And if you are living in the kingdom of this world, all you have is what's in the kingdom of this world to meet those needs, whether it's a romantic relationship, a bigger house, whatever your more is, my hunch is that it's not actually about the more. It's about meeting the deep need inside you. No wonder we want more but more will always leave us empty. More is always moving, more is never enough. And Jesus says, you do not have to live this way. You do not have to live chasing the next best thing. Jesus is bringing in a new kingdom, a kingdom where money is just money. Shoes are just shoes, a house is a house. All of these things are good things, things that you need for survival, but they are not worth putting your trust in. They cannot meet those needs, but in the kingdom of God, you don't need them to because those deepest places of your heart, those holes have been filled by God. Those holes, those needs for love and validation and self-esteem and control have been satisfied and quenched by the love of God. Some of you are thinking, I don't understand how an abstract, invisible God could meet my need to not feel so alone. Or I don't understand how an abstract, invisible God could meet my need to pay my bills at the end of the month. I am not trying to diminish those needs. What I am saying is that I believe in the mystery of God's faithfulness in the mystery of how big and how able and how loving and kind our God is, he is able to meet those deepest places of your heart so that all of a sudden your hands are opened up to give what you thought you needed more of. That when Jesus says, sell your possessions and give to the poor, what he's saying is the deepest places of your heart that were grasping and clamoring for more have now been satisfied so that you can open your hands and share them with others out of abundance because you are rich in God. Would you be willing to take that risk to try letting God meet those deep places of your soul?